Please stand to your feet. Amen. I want you to join me in welcoming our leader, the shepherd over our house. Amen. One Hallelujah. of the greatest of all times. Join me in welcoming yeah. other than Dr. Deron Hepburn. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus a praise, somebody. Yeah. Raise your hands to heaven. Father, we cover this service under the blood of Jesus. We humble ourselves before you. We thank you for clean hands and a pure heart. Give us a word from heaven, God. Touch our air gate, our eyes, our eye gate. Touch us tonight. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit being in our midst. Touch those that are watching by television. God, who are watching online, bless all around the world, Father. Enlarge our territory. Thank you for another day in the land of the living. You're merciful God. Only three people. You're good God. And we plead the blood of Jesus in this room. Come on, clap your hand. Give God a praise. You may be seated. Come out. Give somebody an elbow high five. Come on your seat real quick. Give somebody an elbow high five. Elbow high five. Elbow high five. If somebody greets you like they're not glad to see you, what are they? What are they? If they greet you like they're glad to see you, what are they? A jump high. Close your ministries, go. The Lord is good. Sometimes. Amen. Let's go in our Bibles today. If somebody next to you don't have a Bible, share your Bibles with them. How does faith come? By hearing. Amanda, did you share your testimony? Come up here, run up here and share your testimony real quick. Bring in somebody. Turlin is here. Come share the testimony with the people what's going on in the home of Amanda and her sons. Tell them what's going on with you. Let it get us by. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, so uh, uh, this week is um, a lot has been going on and a lot, you know, I'm trying to adjust to change basically because, you know, God has been giving me a lot and blessing me a lot. So, uh, but really uh, last week on Saturday, um, it was my birthday and um, on my birthday, uh, I had a seven on seven tournament. So it was over near Oak Ridge and um, uh, that's where my coach was uh, holding it at. And I played quarterback on that seven on seven team. So our first game that we went against, we actually went against the Oak Ridge 7-on-7 seven seven team, and uh, we, like, completely skunked them. Like, we just, like, it was, like, 21. It, or we completely beat them. I'm sorry. It's a, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we beat them 21-7, uh, to uh, seven, I'm pretty sure. Or 38-18. Or appreciate you, Richard. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so from that performance and from me doing my best, uh, the Oak Ridge co head coach of that school, he was out there because the, his team, his 7-on-7 seven seven team was out there. So he liked my performance and he wanted, um, well, before I say this, my where, I, where I'm going now, like Dr. Phillips, the high school, on that football team, I'm not, I, I'm not guaranteed um, play time and I want to be quarterback but the coach wants me to put like put me at a different position and thinks I, I'll be better at that when my dream is quarterback so the Oak Ridge head coach he guaranteed me they were complaining that whole entire game actually about how they needed a quarterback so then after that whole game though uh they wanted me to play they come up to me and they want me to play for their, their guarantee yeah they're recruiting me to play for their school as a starting QB like a for that uh school so yeah So, uh, so yeah, I just think it was a really big blessing. Um, it was also my birthday, so like it was like a big, huge, you know, gift. It was like, you know, I was just, I was always wondering how I was gonna, you know, how am I gonna, I really wanna play quarterback, but he wants me to go at this position. So, you know, when that head coach came up to me and the, even the offensive coordinator, he was like talking to me saying like, we need you. Like we wouldn't like, you know, they really wanted me on their team. And I was, at first I was iffy about it cause I was like, what, like, you know, are they playing? But then I talked it up with my mom and then also another, one of my other coaches was talking to me about it. And he was like, you should go for it. They're guaranteeing you play time and more film. You can 
coaching, scouts, yeah, recruiting, more people can see you can be out there. So ever since then, I, um, it's, it was actually Wednesday and today, um, uh, I've been like going over to their school and throwing for them. Like, you know, after uh, they're done with school, I'll th go, you know, play quarterback at their school. But next week, um, I'm pretty sure next week I'll be enrolling at their school. So yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you. And um, just real quick, um, the head coach for Oak Ridge, he used to play for the Steelers and for the Cowboys. So I'm confident, like, and after talking with Bishop, that he, he knows and he's going to be able to recruit them. And, you know, that God just, like, placed us in the right spot at the right time. And it's all glory to him. Y'all put your hands together for them. I think that's a good thing. Is that a good thing? Yes. Amen. Let's go in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew 17. If somebody next to you don't have a Bible, share your Bibles with them. Matthew chapter 17. How many of you in this room, let me ask you a question. How many of you in this room want God to do something for you? Okay. Uh, okay, let me try that again. How many of you expect God to do something? Want him to do something? Expect him? Whether it's a car you need, a job you need need something you got to move on your behalf how many of you in this room okay let's let's go let's Matthew 17 now if you want God to do something for you what do you have to do run somebody say run <laughs> you got to give him something to work with what you got to do so if you want God to do something you can't just sit down you have to give him something to work with and and don't let that just sound spiritual to you like that's practical and you got to understand that in a practical way if I want God to do something for me I have to give him something to work with if I want God to do something for me I got to do what give him something to work with so your your wheel should be turning in your mind have I been if I believe God for some area in my life whether financially uh, a job whatever breakthrough that I'm believing God for have I given God something to work with have I really placed something have I got up and moved have I responded in spite of the way things look or am I just praying and saying God let it happen let it happen not that prayer is not a part of it but there has to be something tangible that you do something what tangible more than you just praying you got if I if I'm believing God to catch a flight I can't just say Lord I believe you to catch a flight or I'm gonna travel I got to get a ride to the airport I got to make arrangements to get to the airport I got to be to the airport on time the plane is not coming for me I got to go to the airport does that make sense so when you believe God for something you have to know that you have the first principle is you have to give him something to work with a lot of times people say their prayers are not getting answered but it isn't that your prayers are not getting answered you're not moving or giving God something to work with how many of you know God is ready to answer our prayer through you it's okay God is ready to answer our prayers but in order for him to answer it we have to give him something tangible Matthew what 17 let's go 27 uh, let's not start reading from 27 let's go to 23 now if your Bible is in red who's speaking five y'all who's speaking Jesus 23 and they shall kill him and the third day he shall what okay so we're in the same book and they were exceedingly sor sorrowful and when they were coming to Capernaum they that received tribute money came to came to Peter and said do it not your master pay what tribute some people Bible may say what somebody okay only one of you somebody Bible may say taxes but say does your master pay, pay tribute does he pay taxes are you still with me he said yes and when he was coming to the house Jesus prevented him saying what thinkest thou Simon of whom do you the kings of the earth take custom or tribute Am I still in the book? Of their own children or from strangers. Peter said unto him, of strangers, Jesus said unto him, then are the, then are the children free. Verse 27, now withstanding least we should offend them. Now withstanding least we cause any offense. It's King James Version, New King James. So the thee and the thou, your Bible may read different. But he's saying, at least we offend them. Watch this. This is, this is something I want you to do. He said, go thou to the sea. Go where? 
go listen where he's telling them go out to the ocean go down to the sea Dimitri he said go to the sea and cast a hook go where so what is he telling him I mean some only one person he said somebody over here said it go fishing so it, it just seems like a funny place to put go fishing because he's talking about paying taxes and paying tribute but he tell him, he said, go down to the sea. In other words, he said, go to, uh, uh, how that seemed like, why would I move in that direction? It, you, it's almost like you would want to tell somebody off. I'm talking about one thing, you're talking about baking a cake. It's like, you, you're talking about, I, I, I should, do, I tell you about all my problems, and you're making it sound like it's, a, like it's a non-issue. You could get offended at this. So they're asking them about taxes or tribute, and this is how Jesus responds. He said, go down to the sea. <laughs> that, it's almost like he should have said, go to the bank. Go to Wells Fargo, and then it'll make sense because it, it, it makes sense in the natural because you're talking about currency and money. So he said, go to the sea. How many of you know God doesn't operate the way we operate? Whoever I'm talking to. God doesn't think the way we think. That's another thing we need to get. God doesn't use who we expect he would use. Because if, if God was to do that, we would put God in a box. And sometimes God has to come another way so that we know that we live by faith and we got to trust him every step of the way. Let's go. Are you with me? If you're with me, say amen. amen. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. So he said, notwithstanding, least we should offend him. Go thou to the sea and cast a hook. He's sending me fishing. We're talking about money. Are you kidding me? And take up the fish that is first come it up. And when thou openest mouth, thou shalt find what? Thou shalt find money, a shekel. Somebody said, thou shalt find a piece of money. Where was the money found? Where was it found? So right there, Naaman, that makes you understand what I'm talking to. It wasn't a customary way to get money. Now that should cause you to think, you don't know who's going to be your blessing. You don't know when they're going to be your blessing. Uh, you don't know how your blessing is going to come. Notice it was a fish. Anytime you see a fish in the Bible, you dream about fish, it's always talking about people. So naturally, it's a fish, but whenever you dream symbolically, it, symbolically, it represents people. So that means you can meet people in an unlikely place, and these people have your blessing. Good preaching. You can, whoever said for real heard me. You can meet strangers. You can meet somebody you, who, 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 who may not be of the same the, uh, uh, nationality. They may not be somebody that, that you expect. But God is setting it up. And notice God didn't bring the fish to them. He told them, go down to where? To the sea. And he told them to cast a hook. So that means you have to understand that if you want God to do anything in your life, you got to give him something to work with and you got to be willing to move. And you have to be willing to meet people. Some of us, we like to stay by ourselves. We don't want to be bothered with nobody. But you need to know your blessing may be tied up in the people that God places in your life. And it doesn't have to always be a Christian. How many of you know a sinner could bless you? Oh, nobody in this room. Sometimes somebody may be a different religion could bless you because God will put it upon their heart. Somebody say divine favor. So you and I, if we are not careful, we could put God's blessing in a box and say, well, God can't use them to bless me. How many of you know God could use anybody to be a blessing to you? If you believe that, clap your hand and give God a praise. And something else I want you to recognize was the blessing came through a fish. So that symbolizes that your blessing will come unlikely, through unlikely people and through unlikely ways. So if I'm expecting God to do anything for me, I have to give God something to work with. So my next thought should be, am I giving God something to work with? Am I too afraid? Am I thinking just one dimensional? Am I thinking this is the only way it could come? Am I thinking, well, this is the only person that it could come through? How many of you know God could bless you in any way he chooses? However, however he chooses to bless you. And when most of us get blessed anyhow we're not asking the person where you get this money from we ever say um, um um where did you get this money how many of you know money is on time when you got a bill you say this was on time thank you jesus it came on time not where you got it from when was the last time somebody blessed you with money and you asked where did you get it from nobody in this church 
What we said was we raised our hands and said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. When was the last time you got a check and said to the people on your job, where did you get this money from? So we appreciate the blessing. What I, what I want you to understand tonight, in order for me to get anything from God, and if God is going to transition anything from heaven, I have to do what? And God provides in our midst, whoever I'm talking to, he will put in your midst the people who will bless you. He sent Peter right to the sea. So in order for Peter to be by the sea, they had to be close by the sea. They had to be in the range of the sea. So he said, get a fish hook. And he said, drop it. And he said, come back and pay taxes to, for them and for me. So God was saying, the person or this fish has everything it needs in its mouth to be able to pay taxes. So the people that God's going to put in your life and put in your way, God has put them there to meet your needs. Somebody clap your hand if you understand that. But what a lot of us do is, we put it in our mind, they can't be the blessing. God could use a stranger to bless you. How many of you ever got blessed in an unlikely way in this room? Uh-oh, three y'all. How many of you ever got blessed in an unexpected way in this room? Something had a key in the mail, it was unexpected. God will provide. What you and I got to do is stop allowing things to the enemy to, to, to put us in the mindset that God's not going to do it. God will always provide for his people. Let's go to, to Psalms 37. Psalms chapter 37. We may turn a little bit tonight. Somebody said, God will never forsake me. And he will always provide. That's another thing I need everybody in this room. Somebody say, God will provide. How will he provide, church? Only one person. You got to give him something to work with. If you don't give God something to work with, you can't expect no provision. He said, go down to the sea and you will find. Now, to you or me, if somebody tell you, look here, I got to pay a light bill. And I tell you, go fish, you'll be like, you know what? That's why I don't like bishop. You would immediately start talking about me. You know, that's why I don't go to these churches. Because they tell you to do all these kind of strange things. And God's way of blessing us is, he say, if, you, if I bless you, you got to give. That seems crazy. He said, give and it shall be? Five of y'all. Give and it shall be? So how do you expect for me to give when I need somebody to give to me? So in order for you to understand the mind of God, if I'm going to set myself up to get anything from God, one of the first things I have to do is change the way I think. Change what? What I got to change? Change your thinking. Stop thinking I don't have anything. Stop thinking, man, these bills are overwhelming. Stop thinking, man, God ain't, God ain't gonna do it. God is going to do it, but it may not come the way you expect it. How many of you say, I don't care which way God come. I don't care if he come through the roof. I don't care if he come through the back door. I don't care if he use the side door. I don't care if he come through the window just as long as he. Give him, touch somebody real quick. Say, give him something to work with. Guess what he did? He used a hook and a fish that had the money in its mouth. So you know what you should be asking yourself tonight? Who got my money in their mouth? <laughs> Who got my what? Who got my money where? Now we know it ain't in their mouth. Where it is? Y'all scared? In their bank account. Or in their pocket. Who got my money? So somebody has your blessing. I don't care, I don't care if you're reaching for a, 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 a deal with something. I don't care if you're believing God for whom. Somebody has your blessing. But in order for you to receive your blessing, you have to move and give God something to work with. And God will bring your miracle behind to pass. So every day you should be expecting somebody to walk into your life that has your blessing. Look, look at somebody next to you and say, do you have my blessing? Uh, look at somebody else next to you say, do you have my blessing? Where was the blessing to pay the tax? In an unlikely place. So most of us, we don't expect it to happen. But I hear you, God. But in order for you to get what God wants for you, guess where you got to be? You got to be where God wants you to be. How many of you thank God tonight that you're in the right place? Oh, clap your hand like you believe that. I'm going to say it again. How many of you thank God tonight that you're in the right place at the right time? <laughs> Ain't nothing like going to a restaurant and somebody show up in the restaurant and they see you in the restaurant and say, hey, is that so-and-so? And you end up right there and they say, tell them I'll pay for their meal. You were in the right place at the... That was your fish paying for your meal. Somebody say, the Lord shall provide. 
So tonight, what we have to understand is besides your job, I hear you, God, besides you thinking about where the money coming from in the natural, who's your provider? Okay, Fabio, who's your provider? So what we have to sustain and remember tonight and sustain us is that the Lord is my provider. Say that. The Lord is my provider. Say it again. Who's your provider? The, Lord. the bank. The Lord. Your job. The Lord. Your daddy. The Lord. Your mama. The Lord. Who's your provider? The Lord. Say the Lord is my provider. The Lord. So that means when your job stops, guess who continues to provide for you? When the economy fails, guess who continues to provide for you? Say the Lord is my provider. The Lord is my provider. So if the Lord is your provider, guess what? You're going to be all right. One way, I was coming tonight, and, and Jemiah was sitting on the side of me, and I knew nobody, but I never noticed this. I, I noticed that UPS, they got the UPS sign, they got the UPS uh, uh, shirt and the punts, and, you know, they got it all over the truck, but I never noticed they had UPS socks. And I said to Jemiah, look at the UPS got their own brand. They got their own brand and everything, right down to the socks. So we got to understand, how many of you know that if UPS takes care of their people, and one of the reasons why they got to present themselves like that is because their company represents their brand. So they want everybody when they look at them to see and know they're from UPS. How many of you know when God, people looks at us, God wants people to see and know we belong to him. Oh, I wish I had somebody. And we represent him. So he wants us to look good. Somebody say, I got my own heavenly socks. Y'all get that one later. Say, I got my own heaven. So that means everything for you. God is saying, I got you covered. Clap your hands and give God a praise if you believe that. <laughs> Why? Because we represent the king. How do you know you represent the king? When you don't panic, when you don't fret, when you say, I don't know, when you don't start. Because when, how many of you know money will, make, will bring the worst out of you? Only my left side. How many of you know money could make your day? Oh, the church ain't going to say nothing. Money can cause you to go off on some people. You know they owe you some money, you got to pay some bill. It could cause you to forget you are saved. Money could cause you to bring, money brings out. Uh, uh, somebody said, you know, the Bible, money is the root of evil. It's not money that's the root of evil, it's the love of money. What it is? But money destroys friendships. Oh, Lordy. Don't pay nobody and see what happens. Their smile will go into a frown. People will get mad over money. Am I talking right? But we got to understand tonight that we are serving somebody higher. We're serving somebody greater. And he knows exactly where our blessing lies. I'm not talking about saying fretting. I'm not talking about worrying. But understand, somebody say, God knows where my blessing lies. In that case, it was in a fish mouth, and they know exactly where to go. God knows how to order your step right where you're supposed to be. If you believe that, clap your hand and give God a praise. Yeah. Somebody say the right place at the right time. Say it again. Say the right place at the right time. Say it again. Say the right place at the right time. How many of you want God to put you at the right place at the right time? Go fishing. Some of you near them, but I don't know, I don't like to fish. You better learn how to fish. Could you imagine that day Peter saying, I don't want to go fishing? So God will take you out. I, I'm preaching right. He will cause you to do something that makes you uncomfortable. He will take you out of your comfort zone. What a lot of us like to do is we want to stay safe. We hate to be turned down. We hate for somebody to tell us no. We hate to make a mistake. You got to fall on your face and get up. You got to sometimes say, God, I made a mistake to get stronger to get back up. You got to be willing to take your losses so that faith can be built in you. Whoever I'm preaching to in here. You're not going to get it right every time. Because you had one bad relationship in the world with, a, with, with, with somebody you dated. You didn't give up on dating. Good preaching. How many of you had one failed relationship and say, I ain't dating no more? The next month you was dating somebody else. You forgot that failed relationship. We have one wrong mistake we made with God and say, God is not faithful. He's not just faithful. He is more than faithful. You got to keep fishing. Good preaching. Let's go. Psalm 37. We quit too soon. We stay too comfortable. God sent him to go fishing. Touch somebody and say, learn to fish. 
Get out of your, what that means is get out of your comfort zone. He said, get a hook, drop it in the water, and the fish you catch, your money is in the mouth. Some of you ain't want to talk to people. The person who you don't want to witness to may be the person carrying your blessing. The person who you don't want to meet, God tell you to go talk to them. Be like, God, I shy. I shy. That may be your connection to your future. Like, God, they're in the same color. God, what they can think of me? How many of you know if you don't go to them, how could God open the doors for you? The Holy Spirit is not just trying to connect you to connect you. Your future may be connected to the person you're meeting. Whoever understands that, clap your hand and give God a praise. You scared? You, you. Tell somebody, learn the fish. Say it again. Say, learn the fish. You can't afford not to do it. Why? Because what you're doing ain't working and God will take you out of your comfort zone to say, I want to make you uncomfortable in order to make you comfortable. Psalms 37. Get out of your comfort zone. That's for somebody tonight. Let's go to Psalms 37. If you're there, let's go. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall be what? Verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do what? And do good whoever and in, in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the? Delight thyself also in the? Oh, come on. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to? And he shall bring forth the, thy righteousness as the light. This is Psalms 37 and 6. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of those who prosper. Somebody say, I will prosper. Look at 25, go to 25, go to 25, go to Psalms 37 and, 20, 20, 37 and 25. I have been young, and now I'm old, yet I have not, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, read the rest. Nor is what? Somebody say, God got me. I don't believe you. Somebody who believe that say, God got me. If you believe God got you tonight, you, if you don't know how to fish, you better learn. To, I, I think when God sends us fishing on those boats and we went fishing, I think God was trying to teach us something symbolically. He said, I know it's an uncomfortable ride. I know you may get seasick tequila, but you need to understand in order for you to catch the big fish, how many of you know you got to go in deep waters? So you got to leave the comfort of the natural, of the shallow, and go in deep waters. Tell somebody it's time for us to go deeper. You got to learn some things you don't learn. Those of you that don't know how to golf, you better learn to stop. You will hang up with the million. Most millionaires like to golf. And you could be out there, if, even if you don't know how to golf. If somebody, if, if a millionaire invites you to golf, go. Do what? And you just say, Holy Ghost, I need you to teach me on the spot. And if he, you watch the way he bends, you watch the way he moves, you watch the way he grabs that ball, because God is trying to develop a divine connection. Some of us can't afford saying, I can't, I don't know what I'm doing. You got to go into the community. You got to meet people because you don't know who's connected to who. So you better learn how to spiritually fish because your blessing could be in somebody else's mouth. Good preaching. Who has your blessing tonight but you're afraid and you're thinking one-dimensional? You're thinking I can't go in certain neighbors or around certain people because I don't have, I don't speak like them. Listen, Lord, if you don't speak like them, just get around them and don't say nothing. Oh, oh my God, I wish I had somebody. I heard somebody say, T.D. Jake said this one time. He said a lot of times we get ourselves in trouble because we talk too much. When you, if you get in a circle of a millionaire, you ain't got to say nothing. You just wait till you ask a question. You ain't got to get in there trying to talk about what you don't know about. How about this stock and what about Bitcoin? You don't wait till they bring up a conversation that you know about. Am I talk right? So you make sure you, you be around until you fit in. God will direct that conversation right to you because he's setting you up. He's setting you up to be who connected to who has your blessing. Somebody say, God has set me up. You, in order for God to do anything for you, you have to give him something to work with. Ask yourself this week, did I give God something to work with? Who did I call? What lunch did I make? We saw on Sunday that Jerome gave God and Denise gave God something to work with. He cooked rice. His little bit of rice and coleslaw brought in over three plus thousand dollars. What he did, he gave God something to work with. What did you give God this week to work with? Jerome did not know when he was cooking that rice, you got to ask yourself, am I positioned, am I positioning myself around the right people? You cannot, oh, preach, black man. If you want to stay broke, you can't. All your friends can be broke. 
You got to get around people that have something so that it will cause you to want more and desire more and step up your game. If you're around the same people doing the same thing, you're going to do what? You're going to get the same results. In order for something to happen in your life that never happened before, you got to get around people that are movers and shakers, people who are doing things, people who will provoke you to go to the next level. You got to ask yourself, do I have this? All my friends broke like me. Everybody looking for change. Everybody looking for handouts. You don't want everybody around you. You want people around you who will provoke you to step up your game. What are you giving God to work with? Am I preaching right? Look at somebody and say, do you have the right people around you? If all your friends always asking you for something, you're in trouble. If every Sunday somebody said, I'm coming over to your house to eat. You got the food. You need to, start, you need to check your friend. How come you always come into my house to eat? How come you can't buy the rice and at least cook it? What are you bringing to the table? You cannot always expect somebody to always want to ride in your car. And if we do that, we're enabling them. You want somebody that will shake you to come up to the next level. Clap your hands and give God a praise. Who are you around? And I hear somebody saying, that's why I ain't around nobody. You in trouble? Because you can't do it on your own. Two are better than one. So you have to be around someone that will provoke you. Jesus knew where to tell him to go. Fuck over to the fish. And they had to go. Jesus didn't go to the fish. He said, you will find the fish. Put the hook in. You got to move. And you put the, the hook in. You can find the fish with the, with the money in his mouth. Jesus knew exactly where to send them. God knows exactly how to order our steps. He knows exactly where to put you. John chapter 6. Let's go. Your blessing is in your midst. Your blessing is in your midst. Your blessing will be right around you. But what do we do with the blessing? I've said this once and I've said it a thousand times. When you see a person like Jonathan Isaacs, how he's here. How many people ever been in this room and say, Jonathan, can I bake you a cake? Or have baked him a cake? I don't raise your hand. Or Jonathan, can I clean your car? And you're next to him. Or Jonathan, what can I do to you? Because what you around, what you around, you want to glean from. Your blessing is in your midst. Where's your blessing? Five of you. Your blessing is in your midst. So it's not what you can get, it's what you can give. It's not what you can what? It's what you can give. When you give, it will be given back to you. That's the principle. What this week, in the midst of all, I can't pay my bills. Bishop, I can't do this. Are you positioning yourself to be around where you can be blessed? You got to position yourself around. You got to be in some type of ministry. You got to be involved in something. You got to set somebody say, I got to set myself up to be blessed. When you set yourself up to be blessed, the blessing will come. Whoever said, set your stay home and say, man, I got to come pay these bills. Come to the church. Clean the bathroom. Come to the church. Clean the floors. Come to the church. Shadrach, can I do something? Or the Sh Ed Shadrach, can I learn something? Come and do it with a, a, a pure heart. Do it with the right spirit. You're setting yourself up to be what? For God to meet your need. Whenever you hear the word blessing, I'm talking about the, your, your credit card can't be paid. The light, you want about your mortgage. The car payment. All your concerns concern God. School payment. Monthly groceries. Whatever the needs are, your concerns concern God. But if you don't give God something to work with, how could he meet your concerns? I know, Bishop, just come to the altar and cry. Come to the altar and cry and get up and do what? Go home and cry more? Go to the fish. Go to the lake. Drop your line in. Put in the hook. Go to the mall. Dress up when you don't feel like dressing up. Go in some of the most expensive stores when you don't even have money to spend. The whole church goes quiet because you don't know who you may meet and connect with in the store. But a lot of us, we think, well, I can't afford. You cannot afford not to do it. A lot of us are just watching life pass us by and not understanding for me to go to the next level. I have to connect with somebody. I have to find my fish. I got to do what? I got to find your fish. You got to go fishing. Your fish ain't coming looking for you. You got to go to the sea. A lot of people are home tonight depressed. A lot of people are home tonight crying, wondering God to do it, and won't come to church, won't come to the house of God, supposed to room and stayed home on Sunday. But those Denise did not come to church, and they said, man, we're going through too much. They had to surround themselves in the right atmosphere. They had to give God something. They had to cook. Even if you don't know how to cook, you could say, Hey, to someone, can I cut the chicken? Can I clean the chicken? Can I put the chicken in the water? What can I do? What? We are giving God something to work with. 
You ain't got to know how to mop. You can put the water in the bucket. When you give God something to work with, you're setting yourself up to be blessed. John chapter 6. Ask yourself, what did I do this week to give God something to work with? How did I move? Did I move on somebody else's behalf? Did I make a call for somebody? A lot of times, whoever I'm talking to, it's not just about you. You getting your needs met is meeting somebody else's need. Whoever said amen heard that. You getting your need met is by meeting somebody else's need above your need. Then God will meet your need. Say, prove it. John 6, if you're there, say amen. The disciples saw the multitude. They saw a crowd of people, Mother Diana, and they said, how are we going to feed these people? It's too much. Money too much. Bills too much. Just too much. What are we going to do? So the first thing they said was, send them away. Jesus said, what's in the midst? What's what? Your blessing is always in your midst. Whoever said, wow, heard me. Say, my blessing is in my midst. And you want to hear something else? How many of you know money looking for a lot of us in this room? Mm. Money is looking for you. Somebody say, money find me. Money. Say, money find me. Money. In order for it to find you, you got to be at the place when money shows up. If you're not at the place when money shows up, guess what? You're going to miss the package. You got to be at the right place. They had to go. He told, if, if he went to the lake when Jesus sent him to the river, was he at the right place? If he went to the, no. If he went to the pond when Jesus said, go to the, go to the lake and drop, if he had dropped his, 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 his anchor in the wrong place, he would have missed the fish. You got to be where God wants you to be. You have to be obedient. You got to be around the right people where God will put you around and they don't always have to speak the same language. They don't always look like you and speak like you. And I found out in ministry, your blessing will come from unlikely places and unlikely people. God could use anybody to bless you. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's go. John 6, are you there? Let's read from verse 1. Uh, verse one. After, little, after, after these things, Jesus went over to the sea. We read that a great multitude followed him because they saw the miracles which he did on, what he, what he did on them. How they other the diseased people were healed. Jesus went up into the mountain there and he sat within his, with his disciples. Where the Passover feast of the Jews was nigh. Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. And he said unto Philip, when shall we, we buy bread? When shall we do what? And these men eat. And this he said to prove for him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip, somebody say Philip. So I say, Philip. Philip answered him and say, say, Phil. Short for Phil. Philip, let's go. Philip answered him and said, we got 200 penny worth of bread, sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples answered, Simon Peter, brother, said unto him, there is a lad here. There is who? Where was the lad? Oh, thank you, Amanda. Where was the lad? In the midst, everything we need is in this house. Somebody say it's in the midst. The Bible says there's a lad here. He had five barley loaves. What do you have? And how many fish? Fish again. Fish represents what? Fish represents what? Fish represents people. And two fish. What are we going to do with five loaves, two fish? How are we going to feed the multitude? How are we going to do this? Where was it? In the midst, but all God needed was something to work with. Not no thousand fish, not no million fish. All he needed was five loaves. Somebody say, all I got to do is give God something to work with. Jesus said, make the man sit. Who said it? When you give God something to work with, you put heaven on alert. Good preach it. When you give God something to work with, you put heaven on alert. It causes God to move on your behalf. You cannot serve in the house of God and not be blessed. You can't do nothing for no one in this room. And see, be like, they didn't say thank you. How many of you, they need to say no thank you. As long as I do it unto God, God is saying plenty thank you. And God's going to reward me for it. Clap your hand if you believe God. 
So it isn't even a much that you need to have. Jerome gave a dollar and 80 cents. Jerome gave God a dollar and 80 cents and went home with over 3,000 plus dollars less in 24 hours from rice and coleslaw. Dollar 80. God multiplied. Where was Jerome's blessing? In the midst. Where's your blessing? In the midst. But you know what we say? I ain't got nothing. Man, I ain't nothing in there. You, how many of you know wherever God is, there's plenty? I'm saying it again. How many of you know wherever God is, there's much? Wherever God is, there's abundance. Wherever God is, there's no lack. Wherever God is, there's healing. Wherever God is, there's breakthrough. Wherever God is, there's miracles. Wherever God is, you can expect strange things to happen. Somebody say unusual things to happen. So blessings are looking for you. The young man just came up and said he was at the right place on his birthday. And because he was at the right place on his birthday, the blessing was looking for him. I want you to be a quarterback at my school. Good preaching. So the blessing was in his midst. God took him from fifth string or fourth string to first string. Come on, clap your hand. Ain't nobody do that but Jesus. God wants to multiply us suddenly. Preach black man. God wants, touch somebody say, God wants to multiply you suddenly. But in order for God to multiply you suddenly, you got to stop looking at what you don't have and start saying what you do have. And when you start saying what you do have, it puts a demand on God to move on your behalf. Clap your hands and give God a praise if you understand that in the room. The problem with some of us, we're so busy thinking, man, I don't fit in. Man, I ain't got this. I ain't got that. No, you got to start saying what I got. A lot of times growing up, we may not have all the sodas we could abide with and preach and do. But one thing we would do in the island is we would make something called switcher. So you would go out in the yard and you would find a lemon tree. And you would pick a lemon off the tree. Anybody know what I'm talking about on the island? And you would cut that lemon in half and you may go inside your house with some water. And it ain't no bottled water, it's tap water. And you make some, and you get your sugar. And if you ain't got sugar, you call your neighbors to borrow some sugar. Am I talking right to anybody? And before you know it, you got a sweet lemonade. And you had a sweet dinner. And you ain't completing, you ain't had no soda. Because that lemonade tastes just as good as soda. You made it work until you could do better. Until God brings you into soda money. We don't be too be so busy completing where we are that we can't appreciate what God is doing in our lives. We can't appreciate the, the little bit that God is going to bring increase from. Everything must in your life got to start from somewhere. One book, then two books, and three books, and four books, and five books. Everything that God does got to start somewhere. But we, we, most of us, we want to just end up in the way and don't want to start somewhere. We don't want to start with the small. We will end up so big and don't want to give God something. You have to give God something. And when you give God something, somebody clap your hands in this room. You'll watch God perform miracles in your life. I'm going to ask you again. How many of you in here want God to do something for you? If you want God to do something for you, jump on your feet. Somebody say, now. now. Sit down. When, would, when did they want tax money? Now. Five of you. Okay, five of you all in another service. When did they want the tax money? Now. Jesus had to pay the tax money right then. So we can't wait till tomorrow or next year. How many of you know our bills are due? The people are looking to, to get the car now. The mortgage man is not waiting to say, um, I can give you another month. The other month, that is the long month, has expired. So the grace period is what? So now we got to pay the money. So we don't need God to do it tomorrow. We need God to do it. So if you want now things to happen, you have to give him something to work with. You got to find somebody you could be a blessing to. You cannot look and say you expect all the blessings to come to you, and then you're not looking for somebody you could be a blessing to. It will not happen. The little boy, when he took his lunch, he took five loaves and two fish. He never took it to feed a multitude. So matter of fact, your little bit is never for you. So whoever tonight is crying, God, I got a little bit, God is saying you got enough. Your little bit is never for you. Your little bit is to be used for the multitude. Five loaves, two fish. When he left home with his lunch that day, he never expected that his lunch was not for him. His lunch was for the masses. 
He did not know when he was making his fish and his bread, what the day you go going to feed the multitude. It was required of him in the midst to be a blessing. Somebody say, God requires something from me. When you give God something to work with, you can expect God to transition something to you. You can expect miracles. You cannot work in the house of God. You cannot serve people. You cannot do your best for people. And God not transition that in to money and to your own blessings and to your own breakthrough and to your own miracles. The reason why it can't happen is because we're too busy saying what we don't have, why things ain't working, why things are too bad. When God said, if you give me something to work with, I'll work on your behalf. Somebody say, work on my behalf, God. The woman at Zarephath, when she had a little bit, when she had a what? When she had a little bit, God sent the prophet to her house. In order for her to get what God has for you, she had to be connected right. She had planned for her and her son to die. Good preaching. When her and her son had died, she said, we got a little bit of oil, a little bit of water. Then after we done do this little bit of oil, we're going to go home and die. But she didn't know that God was making a way in her midst would be her blessing. God don't connect you with people without something greater on his mind. Good preaching. When God connects you, he has something greater. But if you, you, a lot of times people are looking out for a handout rather than looking on how I could be a blessing. That does not want to be your posture when you want to break through. Your posture needs to be what gift, what blessing could I bring? And when you bring that blessing, then God will bring to you what you need. The woman at Zarephath said, I'm about to die. Elisha said to her, feed me first, bake me a cake. And she said, how could I bake you a cake? I got nothing but a little bit of oil and flour for me and my son, and we're going to die. In her midst, so that means in her house the whole time, I'm preaching right, she had what she needed. And when she baked him a cake, I hear you, Lord, and when she baked him a cake, the Bible said the cruise of the flour and the oil never ran out. It never what? Until the famine was over. And I got news for you. The little boy that had the five loaves and two fishes, when Jesus fed the multitude, he had more going home than what he started with. Somebody shout hallelujah if you believe that. God's economy is the greatest economy on the earth. If you believe that, clap your hands. That amen was too soft. God's economy is the greatest economy in the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. But how does God economy work? You got to move. How does God economy work? I got to give God my little bit. It, God does never start you with a lot. He starts you with a little bit. And he will watch how you're faithful with what you have in your hand. And when you're faithful with that is how God rewards you with more. If you want more and want God to meet your need this past week, from Monday rolled in or Sunday, what did you give him to work with? I want you to know, Sunday, Jerome, God bless. Jerome, God what? I wish Denise and Jerome was here. Monday, Jerome came. Jerome said, where are you? <laughs> I said, Jerome, I'm home. He said, I went and I cook you another meal. <laughs> oh, five of y'all. What are you saying? Jerome had the, this thing works. The revelation is he understood without me asking. It was in Sunday service. He went home and he cooked. And I want you to know I ate that fish today. I ate that ribs today. And I ate that peas and rice today and the macaroni today. He understood if I bless the man of God, I can't but be blessed. If we learn to bless each other, we're setting ourselves up. <laughs> clap your, come on, jump on your feet and clap your hands if you believe that. Lord, open every ear in this room. <laughs> JB, tweak the mic. Look at somebody say, your blessing is in your midst. <laughs> say it again. Look at, they don't believe you. Look at somebody else say, your blessing is in your midst. <laughs> Sit down. The Bible says there were woman, a woman called and said, Elijah, went to church. The creditors are calling. They're calling the bill collectors. How many of you in here got some bills? Oh, some of you only raise your hands. Only the kids shouldn't raise their hands because their bills is our bills. How many of you in here got some bills and is overdue? And it got you all nervous because your bills is away in the money. If anybody here, raise your hand, is dealing with that. Raise your hand. Some of y'all scared to raise your hands. Well, look, Elijah got the call. The creditors are calling. Watch what Elijah said to her. What is in your midst? Not I can pay the bill for you. She go to him for help. And he says to her, what is in your midst? What is in your house? 
And she answered, that's very good. I ain't got nothing but a little bit of oil. Somebody said, my blessing is in my midst. The devil will cause your car to break down because he don't want you to come to church. The devil will cause you to get angry with people in church because he will try to get you out of here because he understands. Why do you think the devil tries to do everything to get you not to come to church? Because he knows that if he could stop you from being in the midst, he stops not just you, he stops your blessing. Why do you think he'll cause everything? You get sick before service. Things happen, you get in the argument before church. He knows if they get in the midst, they're going to be blessed. So what I got to do is keep them out the midst. Because the minute they get in the midst, they're going to be blessed. Elijah said to the woman, what is in your house? She said, I have nothing but a little bit of, a little bit of oil. God only needs a little bit to work with. Elijah said, go to all your neighbors and borrow all the jugs that you can find. I'm preaching right, JB. Put another word. Go to the sea. You can find a hook. Drop it in the water. Pull the fish up. Listen, and open its mouth. You can find a coin. Get to work. He said, go borrow all the bottles. And he said, when you borrow all the bottles, miracle. He said, put the bottles around and begin to pour the oil inside of the bottles. And the Bible says, as she poured the oil, the oil never ran out until the bottles stopped. So that should give you a revelation of faith. Faith don't stop until you stop it. Oh, Lashanda. That means if she had brought bottles up until 2021 or 22, how many of you know God would have still been filling bottles with oil? It don't stop until you stop it. Faith is only limited according to your, he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. A lot of us, we limit God because we don't know what's in our midst. Somebody say, take the limits off. The, limits off. the woman was able to pay, sell all the oil with all the bottles and pay off all her debt. All the time the money was in the house. We're connected to our blessing, preaching right. You're connected to the right people. You're connected in the right place. But you're looking for the connection to be according to what you like. Oh, I thought it would happen like this. It ain't going to happen your way. She did not know the oil would be the thing that brought her blessing. What did you wake up thinking will happen? Some of us think it thinking will happen with scratch off. <laughs> Some of us think it will happen like a win the lotto. So and so can die. They can leave me in their will. It ain't, God will allow so and so to live 40 years longer than you expect. Ain't nobody, and then guess what? When they died, they didn't even leave you in the will. Because it don't happen the way you expect. Somebody put your hands on your stomach. Say, my blessing is on the inside of me. You got to stop being scared. It's your gift that makes room for you. The gift of God on the inside of you. The oil on the inside of you, what's going to bring wealth? What's on the inside of you that God said, I want to bring you into a wealthy place, but you're so busy thinking me or it can't happen or Lord God I, I, it's not supposed to happen. You're looking at how, how other people around you, you got to look at how other people around you. You got to look at where God's trying to take you and what he's trying to put on the inside of you. You can have the best of everything if you desire it. Whoever believes that, clap your hand. I say, who believes it? I say, who believes it? Some of us, we don't move with no expectancy. When you get up, you just get up, it's another Monday. You don't move like you expect to meet somebody. There's not a place that I go that I don't expect divine appointments. There's not a place, not just expect, I look for divine appointments. Don't ever pull up at my house in no Rolls Royce, because I can think you drink bringing my car. I'll be like, what took you so long? I'm always, oh, Father Yon, I'm always expecting Pastor Cocroft. Some of us, we don't live a life of expecting. Why don't you live in expecting when the just shall live by faith? So we should move expecting things to happen. And if you go out and say, I can't go out. You know how many times I invited people out and say, I can't go because I don't have the money. How are you going to not go because you don't have the money? I didn't say to you, if you, I, if John and Isaac tell me, say, Bishop, I want to take you out. I'd be like, what time? Now you're making me come down. Tisha and JB. They live by, but all they, they wait for me to call them. What they do? They wait. If, if they see Dr. Hepper, they be like, yes, sir. When I call Tisha early in the morning, she sound wide awake. Tisha, yes, Bishop. Are you sleeping? No, I'm ready to go. <laughs> they always, they always on go. Because they know if they get a call from me and they understand if Bishop asks us to do it, they have never said no. Because they are what? They're expecting. You have to move like you expect. Because if you got bills and things that are overwhelming you, God don't want you to drown. What father would want his child to die? 
He wouldn't be a good father. What father would not want to provide? Ask yourself that. What mother would not want their children to have? So God in heaven want our bills to, for us to be worried and under depressed about bills. God wants to be crying about bills and can't put gas in our car, can't pay the light bill. That's how God wants, oh, I know. We serve a God that wants us to live in the dark. Oh, we serve a God that wants, we can't pay child support, so he wants us to be in jail. That's not the God we serve. God wants us to be blessed, to be a blessing. This is no Joseph ministry. <laughs> Somebody say, my, oh, you'll get that later. Say, my ministry is not in jail. <laughs> Thank you, Lashanda. So he will set you up. He will put you in the position so that you will be a blessing. But you got to move with expectation. And then when God wants to bless you, say, God, I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for your miracle. I thank you, God, that you're working on my behalf because I gave you something to work with. Clap your hands and give God a praise if you believe that. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Move with expectation. And church, I'll do me like, man, it's, some of you, you go straight home. Straight home for what? Go out. Bishop, I ain't got no out money. Go find out who going out. <laughs> Get around people where you stop doing the routine because the routine got you broke. The routine is not producing. So if you're around people and they always want to go straight home, be like, you know what, I'll catch a ride home. Whoever said so good heard me. I spoke to Bursal the other day. Bursal, are you here? I don't see you. If you hear, say, oh, yeah, say amen. Say amen. I said to Bursal the other day, Bursal is believing God for some things. And Bursal came a little late. And I said to Bursal, I said, well, he said so-and-so wasn't able. I say so-and-so. I say so-and-so ain't trying to get where you're trying to go. I say so-and-so already finished pastor college or the age of college. You're trying to get to college. You have to understand you cannot wait on people and wait for people to do things and say, man, I got to be, a, I, I'm trying to get somewhere. Somebody I'm trying to get my bills paid. You're trying to get something from God. So you got to break. If anybody in this room hearing me, clap your hand and give God a praise. You ain't got no time for excuses. When I was a little boy, I never used to wait for no church bus to get to church. I used to hike to church, and if the car didn't come, I would walk. I'll say it again. When I was a little boy, I never used to wait on no church bus to come to church. If the bus didn't come, I would walk. And if I didn't walk, I would wait, I would hike, and maybe somebody would see me go into church. Oh, that was my seed to where I am now. In order to get anything from God, your excuse will never produce nothing from God. Basketball players, football players, tennis players, whatever you can be. Any good coach is not waiting for your excuse. Your excuse could be legitimate. They want you to get around your excuse. Why? Because they want to see how bad you want it. And you got to want it more than the other person. And if you don't want it more than the other pe person, you will never... Oh, if I'm preaching right, clap your hand. Anybody that's hearing me, jump on your feet. Some people are going over your head. You're trying to get to college. How are you trying to get to college and people who you with already finished college? They're not going to have the same precedent or desire you have. Sit down. Oh, they ain't never been. So imagine all your friends are people who never been to college and you trying to go. <clears throat> How are they going to provoke you to go? You got to get around people who will provoke you, who, who, who will be college and when they preach, they speak college educated. They talk about their future because it will provoke you. People who have more than you, so it will provoke you to go to the next level. Or you will, if you be around a bunch of people who ain't never been to college, guess what? If what's on them will jump on and be like, you know, I ain't got to go. And you know what most people say? Well, you ain't got to go to college to be successful. And that's the truth. But that wrong spirit could arrest you. And what God has for you is to go to college... Because he has success, because of the people you're around, you dumb yourself down. Thank you, Lashonda. Around the wrong mindset. We are in the midst of, we should thank God we're in jump ministry. Let me tell you why. That's nothing to do with me, because we're in a faith ministry. Oh, I wish I had more than that. Because we're in a faith ministry, the faith alone in this church should provoke you. 
It ain't got to be the dress. It ain't got to be how people look. It ain't got to be because we're here. It should be the faith alone that provokes you. And that faith alone, if God could do it for them, he could do it for me. You're in a place where faith is multiplied, where faith is increased. My sermons are demonstrated every time I preach. Why? Because you are in a faith ministry. It should provoke you. You're supposed to be reaching for more. You're supposed to be quitting on a bill, quitting on a car. I'll never forget when I never had a car. I walked around my car lot with no car. People in here ain't got no car. Pastor Coco, am I telling the truth? Because you were there. I walked around outside, said, Lord, I thank you for my car. Lord, I thank you for my car. A gentleman that had a carpet company, a white gentleman, by the name of Mark, I won't tell you the last name. He said, to, he brought me a Caprice Classic, maroon and gray, and it was bad. It was clean. He brought it to me, paid off, and said, God told me to bless you with this car. Say, what happened to the car? Pastor Cocroft crashed it. You hear him say, yep. <laughs> you have to be around people that will provoke you. You have to be around people that will challenge you. God don't bring you around people so you could see what they have and wish I could have, should have, would have. God is showing you what he wants for you. He's not bringing you for you to be jealous and intimidated and be like, oh, God could do it for them and not for you. How would God put somebody in your midst? He's putting you in the midst because what he does for them, he wants to do the same for you. The difference is he's given them something to work with. You got to get around the right people so your mindset will change. And it doesn't happen, good preaching, the way you expect it. Your blessing is in your midst. Come on, man, I got to go to Beverly Hills. Your Beverly Hills is right here. Everything you need is right in your midst. God will connect you with the right people. It's connected with the people that God is sending you to. It may be your boss that God is saying, invite them to church. And God will do something in their heart. And then when you bless them, God will bless you. That's what happened to Yasser. Yasser is coming and then Yasser brought his cousin. Our blessing is in the fish mouth. It's in meeting people. It's in being around the right people at the right place at the right time. And then watch how God will open doors for you. Somebody say, my blessing is in the fish mouth. Learn to fish. Learn how to evangelize. Be in quieting and get your blessing. The world puts it like that. They say, empty mouth never get fed. You got to speak up. What you got to do? Empty mouth never get fed or you get passed. When they call your name in school, they say, so-and-so, are you here? Present. So-and-so, are you here? Present. They say, so-and-so. If you don't say present, you get Mark absent. You got to open your mouth. What you got to do? Evangelize, meet people. And stop wanting them to be who you think they should be. God could use somebody who's a Muslim faith to be your blessing. I was telling Shanda today, the person that owns this building is Hindu. Do you know Hindus have three, th almost 300 and something different gods they worship? Say, see, am, am I talking right? Almost 300 and something god. There's a god for everything. The landlord of this entire building is Hindu. Do you know how much grace and favor he has given me? How much great, not born again, speaking in tongues? Almost $10,000 a month for almost 15 to 20 years. Jump. <laughs> the whole church goes quiet. Almost $10,000 a month for 15 to 20 years. Jump. You know your tithes and offering. You know when you pay it and you don't. And God still sustained me. Last month, last month, Shanda, called, Shanda was away. True story. And Shanda called me just recently. I wish she was here. Last month. And she said, you know what? I don't think we paid rent last month. I said, I said, we ain't paid rent. They would have called me. I said, we paid rent. <laughs> I said, because I ain't hear from nobody. Shonda told me last month, not because we didn't have it. Not because what? Somebody said, thank God. We just didn't. How many of you know that landlord ain't called me yet for almost $10,000? He didn't get it. Shonda came today and said, you know, I don't think we paid it. I checked the books, and the lady came. She must remember, I said, you know what? I said, go pay it. He didn't ask me for it. I told her to go pay it. Say, favor. You don't pay rent for a month. The 
should be ringing your phone off. Say favor. favor. And he's Hindu. So it doesn't have to come the way you expect. I'm preaching right. It doesn't have to come through who you expect. It doesn't have to come in the form or the idea who you will come. God will allow people who you least expect to be a blessing. And stop saying who can't bless you. Stop saying I won't take no dirty money. What is dirty money? <laughs> I need your eyes. Did I just say that? I don't take no dirty money. What is dirty money? <laughs> oh, the whole church goes quiet. Somebody say amen. Again, when was the last time you asked somebody if their money was dirty when they came with you for $1,000? Is this dirty? <laughs> Go wash it before you, I take it. How'd that car payment do? The bills black to call you. Oh, let me watch this before I pay. Are you kidding? Lord, I thank you for your blessing. Clap your hand if I'm making sense to anybody in here. Come, Shadrach. Look at somebody say, your blessing is in your midst. You got to find new people every part. If you hear me tonight, jump on your feet. You're too slow. God, I'll sit down. Y'all ain't ready. Your blessing is in your midst, man. I do not move. If you, a lot of you in here, you have to learn your bishop's spirit. You do not have my spirit. You are here, but you don't have my spirit. I expect to be blessed. I don't move without expectation. That's how I met Jonathan. And I didn't meet him knowing who he was. I met him telling him what he needs and who he needs. And a lot of us, the devil is so busy telling you, but you be like, I ain't worthy. What would they think? I have what you need. You don't have what I need. Because what I, what I have is far greater than what you have. Whoever believe that, clap your hand and give God a praise. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm the blessing. Uh-uh. If you believe that, jump on your feet, say, I'm the blessing. I'm the blessing. Find somebody real quick and say, I'm the blessing. I'm the blessing. Find somebody real quick, say, I'm the blessing. They don't believe you. I said, I didn't say shake their hand. Tell somebody real quick, say, I'm the blessing. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. How many of you want God to do something for you? Yeah. What you got to do? Yeah. How many of you want God to pay your bills? Yeah. All your bills. Yeah. What you got to do? Yeah. How's your blessing coming? Through the people in your midst. How many know it's coming through people? When was the last time you saw money drop from heaven? I need everybody's eyes. When was the last time you saw your money drop from heaven? So money dropping from heaven, all of us should go outside right now and look up. How many? Oh, I'm preaching right. We can be looking up for a long time. Your money is coming through people. And it's coming through unexpected people. You can't afford not to minister. You can't afford not to learn how to fish. You can't afford not to be in church and find out what is in the midst that I can do. And stop coming to church judging people. Only LaShonda heard that. Stop coming to church judging people because the people you're judging are the people who can be a blessing to you. Y'all better get quit that. Stop coming to church saying, the, the people, the people who be like, oh, I'm so holy and so righteous and they got it all. They don't do nothing for you. You ain't never noticed that. They, stay, they got a word for you, but they ain't got nothing tangible for you. I just... I should have shut the church down. They always got a word. Listen, I don't need a word. I need, I'm hungry. Do you have some money? The Lord tell me to prophesy to you. Didn't the Lord tell you that I got a light bill that need to be paid? Whoever said amen. People always got a word. They won't hear what the Lord is saying. Did the Lord tell you that I needed gas and I have no gas in my car? Did he tell you my fridge is empty and I have no food? Did he tell you that I'm facing prison if something's not paid? They are spiritual, but they don't put works behind what they speak. Tell somebody, get out of here. Uh -uh, Y'all telling me, why you're telling me? I put action behind what I speak. 
Look at somebody and say, get out of here. God tell me you can, uh, God tell me this sin in your life. God tell you the sin in my life. He tell you I need food. Feed me, then I can listen to you. How many of you know when you're hungry, you don't hear nothing? JB, you heard that. When you're hungry, you want to eat. Jesus didn't just minister to them. Preach black man. What he did? He fed them. Stop being so super spiritual and judging people and thinking where well, you're blessed. This for somebody at home too. Wait, who could bless and who can't bless? God could use a donkey to bless you. God could use whoever he wants to use to bless you. Stop putting him in a box. And stop thinking that you know God so well. If you knew him that well, then you would know my need. And that you know my need would open me up to hear you. So because you didn't know my need, I can't hear you. You meet their need. The Bible says the multitude follow him because they saw him meeting their need. Love is not what you say, jump. Love is what you... Oh, let's stand. God wants to meet every need in this room. Your blessing is in your hands. The women in here that does here, when last of you went to a woman and say, say to any woman in here, can I do you here? The women in here that do any here, I didn't say go to them. Any woman in here that do here, come. I, oh, for y'all taking so long. Are uh, you putting on this on the spot? Yes. Any woman in here that does here, come. Face the people. I'm trying to teach, teach you tonight. Your blessing is in your midst. Teacher, you don't do here? Look, she don't do here. She forgot how to do here. She done doing jewelry now. She said, I don't do here no more. I graduate here. I done graduate that. Listen, you don't ever graduate a gift. Now, all of you that just came, that this, I'm trying to teach you right now. What I'm trying to do? The one, the, the, who's that on the end? Amen. Stephanie, come, come. You, you first. Now, I didn't say somebody came to you. This can help the whole church. When last Miss Stephanie went to any of the women in here, or men, because you know how to do them little drop plats too. What you call them little drop plats, y'all? What you call them? The little ones, you know what the new guys wearing in the... When last you went to anyone in here? Because you do men and women, right? You know how to do them little plats. When last you went to any men or women in here? Take your time and say, can I do it here? When last? Take your time. You're in trouble. Okay, you're good. Quinn, you're, you're, come, not yet. I, I come, take your time. I say, when last? Stephanie, before I let you go, though, do your bills? Say it strong. Do your bills? I can't, Phil can't hear you. Do your bills? Stacy can't hear you. Do your bills? A lot of bills. Do you have a baby coming? Do you have a baby coming? Do your fingers still do the walking? Do your fingers still do the walking? Take your time. Quinn. Quinn, Quinn, Quinn. I didn't say when last you sent somebody to do their hair. Take, listen to my question now. When was the last time <laughs> you said to someone in the midst, not send them, Men or women, can I do you here? <laughs> I like them a couple months. I appreciate that truth. Give me, give me a wink like me that. Do that. No, you ain't do that. Do that. You ain't do it that. Yeah. Hey. When was the last time you said to any men or women in here, men or women, can I do you here? Free. Uh, last year? Every month. Okay, every month you do it. Tisha? Last month. Who you went to? Yeah. <laughs> Who did you go to? I said in the midst. Jada. Jada. You mean your niece, Jada? Your niece, Jada. Oh, you keeping it in the family? Yeah, yes, you're keeping it in the family. 
I, I got, no, no, I, let me ask the question first. Don't cut me off. Because <laughs> you feel it. See, they don't, I know y'all may just see them, but that's everyone in here, but you, you need bills paid. That's it. See, because you see them, and you probably in your mind, wow, they ain't never asked me. But what did you do? But you need things done. I'm showing you in the realm how God operates. But then we can come and pray and say, Bishop, man, the bills ain't paid. The bill. But you're not giving God something to work with. See, if, the key, if Tisha took Mother Diana and said, Mother Diana, I got to look for you that will blow your mind. And she doing, Mother Diana's here. Come, Mother, come, Tisha. Come, Mother Diana. Sit in front of Tisha. Sit, get her a chair. Somebody get her a chair. Move a little faster, move a little faster, uh, uh, uh. Emmanuel. Don't hesitate, just run, beat him to the deal. Play with her here a little bit. And Tisha playing with her, right? She said, Tisha, man, you still making jewelry? Man, you know what? My niece's birthday coming. I need you to make two, three bracelets for me. So in the midst of her ministering, her ministry gets paid. And she said, if you do it, I can give you $300. So she thought she was just calling her to do it here. But she didn't know Mother Diana, God would have put in her spirit to buy jewelry. When you don't move in your gift, it stops you from God opening doors for you. Because you're afraid to fish. <laughs> but most of us can leave here tonight. Let me do what you can do. You can go home and pray. You can go home and read your Bible. And you can do everything spiritual, but you do nothing natural. But you need your bills paid in the natural. You need your credit card paid. You need your car payment. You need a car. But you ain't giving God nothing. But yet you come in short, you come in short because you don't understand your blessing is in your midst. Your blessing is the people you're around. You many different hairstyles Jonathan like? Jonathan like the drop plaits. He'll come in here with some drop plaits sometime. What you call them? The drop plots, then he would come sometime. But John, John, man, I know a good look on you. Man, I could do it. Man, you should let me try this look on you. If you go and say, I want to be a blessing to you. And, and if he liked the look, guess what he can keep doing? He can keep coming back. And guess what? And then let other players see you look. Man, John, and they have to ask him, who did your hair, man? Who does your hair? And then other players, that's how she got some job. That's how she got some job. Because they saw his hair. But if you sit on your gift, I'll go, go open any doors for you. Even right down to those who could do makeup. People in here that could do makeup, makeup and fix people's makeup. Why don't you go to one of the young ladies and say, man, can I do your makeup? I, I, got, I got something. People are newcomers that are coming. Your blessing is in your midst. You can't get the increase because you give God nothing to work with. You're never thinking of who you could be a blessing to. You think about all the blessings you need, but not how you could be a blessing. God is poised to bless everybody in this room. He's poised to open doors beyond your imagination, but you're not thinking of God, I need to get in the midst. Oh, you can't afford to miss a service, but you can't come to service and not think how I could be a blessing in the service. You want to bring something to the service. You don't want to just come and say, but I was in church. What could I bring? What offering could I bring? When they went to the temple yearly to pray, uh, Hannah went to pray yearly. They took an offering. They took an offering. You don't ever come to church without an offering. You have to give God something to work with. Your offering could be ushering. Your offering could be modeling. Your offering could be when you ask to do something. Your offering is Pastor Elliot. When you give God an offering, that's how he opens doors. When you do it here, that's an offering. And your offering must always be done with excellence. You know the mother that talked about her son? Her offering is she's in school teaching the kids as an administrator. So she's taking care of God's business and then God is taking care of her sons. Her offering is the children of God in the school. So God is taking care, she's taking care of children. So her children are being taken care of, see? taking care of children so she's putting a demand to take care of God has put she's putting a demand on God so God you take care of my children
if you want your, your, your bills paid, what are you giving God to work with? Let me say, you ain't going to leave it here down. You're going to leave it here depressed. The disciples had to learn this. They were Jesus. They were God's disciples and didn't understand. They were taught by God, not by me. By God, and they didn't understand. They were taught by God, not by me. By God. Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. And he said, you feed them. And they still didn't understand. They said, how oh, we could feed them? We only got five loaves and two fish. What you talking about, God? <laughs> Send them away. Too much send them away he said no you feed them before they go you feed them they didn't understand god so you think if they had problem understanding god you're not gonna have a problem understanding me he made them stay in the midst never send them away your blessing is in your midst it took one here do for someone to take to work for you to get but with seven different women won't do here your blessing is in your midst but we're not looking to be a blessing. We're looking to be blessed. The principle is look to be a blessing. Then you will get blessed. Your blessing is in your midst. Where is it? No, in your midst. Where? In your midst. So you know that everybody in here should be thinking about who I could be a blessing to because your blessing is in your, in your midst. Don't miss what God have for you. Because you think it's strange to go to a fish mouth. Don't miss what God have for you because you have in your mind how it should be done. And through who it should be done through. Am I making sense to anybody in here? If I'm making sense to anybody, take a step. This young man in the gray sweater is listening. I don't know who he is. Who he is a man in this gray sweater? Yeah. He's listening. He's listening. That little boy, he's listening. I'm telling you, you could, you could buy, I, I, I do what I do. I'm good at what I do. He's listening. But you don't want to say, watch the dishes, watch the dishes, watch the dishes. Child, you listen, but listening is applying. When you start being a blessing, watch God begin to meet your finances. Watch him open the doors for you. And don't make excuses. Listen, God hates excuses. God doesn't like excuses. You know what he does with excuses? He takes what you have from you and he gives it to somebody who isn't making one. Look at somebody and say, God don't like excuses. I know y'all never heard that. Y'all thought it was just break. You thought it was just a sin. Uh, no, we thought it was just lying, fornicating, adultery, and all the sins we labeled. Excuses is also something he doesn't like. You never knew that. You had your label. Let me label another one for you. Excuses. Unbelief he doesn't like. You want another one? When he tells the spirit you to do something by the spirit and you don't do it, you just sin against him. I know you got your label for sin. We think lie, adultery, all the different things. You got your label of sin. Disobedience is a sin. Quenching the Holy Spirit is a sin. Somebody, what is quenching? When he tells you to do something, you don't do it. When he tells you to give or sing or dance, be like, God, not now. Disobedience, that's quenching him. That's why he's the one true judge, and you and I can't judge. Because he sees from every end of the spectrum. You and I only see one side of the spectrum. God sees left, right side, what, every center. That's why he's a just judge. He don't judge according to how you and I think he should be judged because he sees everything from all the sides. You and I only see one side. We judge from the side we see. He judged from all ends. Perfect judge. Your bills is predicated on you. Be a blessing. Somebody say, my blessing is in the midst. If you hear me, it'll revolutionize your life. If you hear me, it will change your life forever. Say, my blessing is in the midst. Takeda never went looking for Jonathan. Her blessing came to her midst. She never went looking for him. Let me go to an NBA game and wear a short skirt, a tight bra. Let me drop it like it's hot. Did I just say that? She ain't do none of that. In the house of God, serving God, Keep been trying to do her best to stay integral. Then God brought her blessing. Blessing was in the midst. Your blessing is in the midst. 
and it isn't much you don't need much you need little what you need if you hear me tonight take a step God open every ear in this room somebody say amen what's the greatest commodity on earth three y'all let me try that again what's the greatest commodity on earth faith <laughs> faith produces what money what's the greatest commodity on earth in the kingdom is faith what faith produces faith produces money what is greater faith or money what's greater faith or money why faith because faith is eternal you can never learn them principles in the word in the world you can learn it in the word in church faith is eternal money is temporal when we move in faith we trust God heaven's economy must be manifested on earth let your will be done in heaven as it is on let your kingdom come on earth as it is in let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven has no shortage heaven has no shortage so what translates in heaven must translate on earth only Quinn heard that your blessing is in your means somebody say I got to look for nothing well I may have to go to the fish mouth I may have I may have to go fish it <laughs> you got to open your mouth and talk to people you won't be shy that young boy he had to learn he had to talk to the coach he had to say I won't play quarterback if he didn't open his mouth and say he won't play quarterback would any coach be looking for him five of y'all he had to say I won't play quarterback he had to open his mouth raise your hands father we repent can we repent y'all we repent for unbelief we repent for saying what we can do I ain't got no gas you know listen you know what a lot of people doing right now give me your eyes people ain't got no gas you know what they doing they driving to the gas station and waiting for somebody to put gas in the car <laughs> that is the truth they will sit in the gas station and you know there's some people so bold they'll ask you for gas money some people in the world got more faith than us believers and not just more faith than us believers they got more persistent than us because like the first time they get all they do is go from pump to pump I watch them do it you any gas money no I, I only got a credit card okay thank you next car <laughs> You ain't got it, but somebody here can give me some money. You know what they're doing? They are unsaved evangelizing. If you hear me tonight, take a step. Where's your blessing? Five of y'all. Where's your blessing? Where's your blessing? You know what I didn't tell you with Bursa that night? The night that he came late was the night we took him in the office. John, am I right? And we told him a blessing. The night that he came late was the night that his, he if suppose he didn't come. Your blessing is in your midst. And where he should have had that down back was because the first blessing was in the midst. So there shouldn't even have been a question about where the other blessings coming from. We should have been desperate to get to the midst. You know why we're not desperate to get to the midst? Because we forget where our blessing comes from. Whoever said, come on, heard me. You must never forget where your blessing comes from. This young lady listening to, raise your eyes. Don't be scared. I try to help you. Eyes closed. Father, we cover this church under the blood of Jesus. We ask for mercy over judgment. Somebody say, Lord, help me to stay in the midst. Say, Lord, help me to stay in the midst. Say, help me to recognize my blessing is in the midst. You got enough. You have what you need. Your eyes closed, hand raised. You have what you need to be a multi-millionaire. You have what you need. I know you only admitted we are lazy. We are, y'all. We are lazy when God has so much more we are lazy how many of you know laziness ain't cutting it 
Oh, I wish I, none of y'all want to say nothing. I know you're going to be mad at me, but truth is, we lazy. Some of us, we comfortable with our little bread and Cheetos at home when we go and lay with, let that Cheetos and bread go. You can get them real quick. We lazy. We can't be lazy in this hour, y'all. This ain't the time to get lazy. This is the time to be diligent. Father, hands raised. Whoever I'm talking to, raise your hands high. Father, let this word find good ground. In the name of Jesus and let it bear fruit. Jesus sent Peter to the fish mouth. Your if, you have, if you hear anything I'm saying tonight, your blessing is in somebody. Your blessing is in somebody. Somebody carrying your blessing. I know you thought it was all you. Mm -mm. Your blessing is in the fish mouth. Somebody got your blessing. Somebody say, Lord, let me find them. Oh, Lord. If you, hear, if you mean that, take a step. Say, Lord, let me find them. And let me tell you how you find them. Don't go to that fish thinking, I want the right fish. <laughs> God knows what you need. God knows what? God knows what you need. Because you know some of us in here, we picky all day. That's why some of us, we have a difficult time getting married. Because your fish must be a black fish. You'll get that one later. Your wife must be a black fish. <laughs> when God may have a Creole fish for you. God may have a Bohemian fish for you. He may have a Caucasian fish for you. Someone, I don't eat Caucasian. That's your problem. It ain't what you like. It's what you need. <laughs> Only one. Thank you, LaShonda, for coming to church tonight. You helped me out good tonight. The rest of them mad at me, but that's all right. He don't give you what you want. He gives you what? If we're a triple, would we have? If we if we were a triple, would we have? We'd be. Imagine if we get everything we want, we'd be a double trip. God don't give us what we want. He gives us what we, and nobody knows you like God. Eyes closed, hand raised. I want to say this to someone: Don't ever come to church without an offering. Don't take his house for granted. Don't take service in this house for granted. Don't do it. Always look to be a blessing. Always look to be a blessing. Amen? Three, y'all. Thank you, three. If you hear me tonight, take a step. Those who are adults, turn around. You know what that means? Y'all better find some hears. Not just tonight. Not just tonight, oh, I feel it, Bishop, amen. Then next month, y'all forget all the sermon. It has to be a lifestyle of meeting needs. It has to be a lifestyle. It has to be a heart to want to do it. What it has to be? Got to ask God for the heart. Father, tonight, thank you for every heart and mind in this room. I believe y'all are hearing me tonight. I believe someone in the room is hearing me. I believe somebody is hearing me. You can't miss if you hear me. And let me say this, eyes closed. Don't worry about the other person's response when you want to be a blessing. If they say, they don't say thank you, they cut their eye, they got an attitude. You do their hair and they got an attitude with you. That ain't your problem. Do it unto the Lord. It's the Lord rewards, not them. A lot of times we look for people to give us a certain response. And when we do it, we don't do it. That's why I don't do it no more. That's why you, if you don't do it no more, you did it for the wrong reason. You did it for their applause and not God applause. You don't want to do things for people to say thank you. You want to do things for God to be pleased. Jesus healed 10 and only one came back to say thank you. He didn't stop his healing ministry. He still healed. 
So you don't stop ministry because people didn't respond the way you expected. That means your motives was wrong. You wanted the reward from them and not from God. God's reward is greater than men's reward. Only one person heard me. I'll say it again. Hey, raise your hand. Somebody felt me though. God's reward is greater than men's reward. I promise you that's true. God's reward outweighs men's reward. It does. So Father, I thank you for your reward and for rewarding us. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Say it again. Hand raise. Say, thank you, Lord. Hand raise. Say, thank you, Lord. Say, God's reward outweighs men's reward. If you believe it, clap your hand and give God a praise. Oh, clap your hands, church. How many of you feel good? Raise your hands if you feel good in the house. Raise your hands if you feel good. Look at somebody. I'm looking to be a blessing. So I'm going out looking to be a blessing. Uh, you're telling me, look at somebody say, I'm going out looking to be a blessing. You may be seated, get ready to give your best to the Lord. <laughs> my, my godson Demetrius need a new hairstyle. My godson needs somebody to do his locks. Go 